In this video, I'm going to teach you about the position parameter, which allows us to control the start time of our tweens in a timeline. So to teach you about the position parameter, I'm going to use this visualizer that I built. All right, It's really cool for showing you how changing the position parameter actually offsets the placement of the tweens in the timeline. Right now, we have a very standard timeline called animation, and it has three tweens in it. The targets of those tweens are very clearly the star, circle, and square, as you see in the code and also on the screen here. Each tween has a duration of one second, and they're all going to play back to back. So right now, you'll see in the visualizer, we have the star tween down here, and it has a duration of one second. When the playhead gets to one second, then the circle tween is going to play, and at two seconds, the square tween is going to play. So all of them just play back to back as you would expect. I can do some very rudimentary things like change the duration of the star tween, which is the first tween in the timeline. And when I hit run, you're going to see now that that tween has a duration of two seconds, but the circle tween and the square tween still follow, okay? So again, what's really cool about timelines is that I can change the duration of one tween and it automatically pushes the others down the track and you don't have to worry about using a delay or anything like that. Now, let's say that I want the circle tween to start maybe one second after the star tween finishes. Well, let me go into the code for the circle tween, and I'm going to add an additional parameter here called the position parameter. If I put that in quotes and use the plus equals notation, that's referred to as a relative position, okay? It means add it one second after the previous tween ends. So if I hit run now, we're going to see a little bit of a gap, okay? So you're going to see that the star plays, and then there's a one second pause, and then the circle, and then the square go, okay? So by adding plus equals one to the second tween, it added this one second gap down here in the timeline. If I wanted the circle tween to start one second before the star tween ends, I could switch this over to minus equals one, all right? And that's gonna say start one second before you normally would. And then so now when I go for the visualization, you'll see that the circle tween starts at a time of one, one second before the star tween ends. And again, the square tween still follows just like that. I'm gonna change this back over to, uh, I don't know, plus equals one. And now let's say that we, let's run it so we see what it looks like. We're gonna have that gap again. And now let's say that we want the square tween to start at exactly the same time that the circle tween does. Well, based on what I just showed you, I could move it back one second by using a relative position. So I'm gonna say minus equals one, a negative relative position. Let's do that and aha. So I moved the square tween back one second, which means now the circle and the square are gonna start, boom, at exactly the same time. Now that's awesome. And usually just these p relative positions are all you need. You could probably use them 90% of the time. But let's say that we always wanted these two tweens to be locked at the same start time. And somewhere down the line, I realized, you know what? I want the circle tween to be much longer. Maybe I want it to be, I don't know, uh, th three seconds long. So let's change that to a three. I'm gonna hit run. And so now you're gonna see that the circle tween is much longer, it's three seconds long, and then that negative one for the square tween starts it at a time of five seconds, all right? So remember, this the last tween's placement is relative to the previous tween, so it's starting at a time of five. So that kind of stinks, right? Every time I change the duration of the circle tween, if I make it two seconds, um, we're still not gonna have it start at the same time. So check this out. Greensock came up with a new position parameter and it's the uh, less than sign, like this. And what that means is start at the same time as the previous tween, okay? So this is really cool and flexible. So when we get to the square tween, it says, hey, start at the beginning of the previous tween. So that's gonna line those up perfectly. Let's watch this go and voila, the square tween always starts at the same time as the circle tween. I can then say, hey, you know what, circle tween, your duration is going to be three. I don't have to change any other code. The circle tween is gonna be now three seconds long and the square tween stayed locked in to the same exact start time, all right? We have that little gap 
and boom, they both start together. If you've used previous versions of GSAP, using this notation here is gonna basically replace the way you used labels in the past. The next type of position parameter I wanna go over is an absolute time, okay? So suppose we don't want things to be relative. Maybe I want the second tween to start at a time of one second, and I always want the square tween to start at a time of four seconds, okay? This is referred to as an absolute position, all right? Just a number, no quotes, no nothing else. I'm gonna hit run, and now you're gonna see that the circle tween starts at a time of one, and the square tween starts at a time of four. Oh, and one more thing about using that less than sign. Let's say that I always want the circle to start at a time of one, and I always want the square to start just a little bit after when the circle starts. Well, first, let's add in our less than sign here, okay? So the square tween is now gonna be locked in place with whenever the circle tween starts, okay? But what if I want it to start just a little bit after that? Well, I can say, you know what? Let's add on here 0 0.5 seconds, okay? So I just wanna show you this notation, and now you're going to see that the square tween starts half a second after the circle tween begins. And once again, I can put that circle tween wherever I want. I can put it at a time of three and hit run. So now the circle is gonna start at a time of three and the square tween is gonna start half a second later. So again, an insane amount of flexibility here by using the position parameter. In the next video, we're gonna put it to practice in our little example with the freds. This video is from my GSAP3 beginners course, GSAP3 Express, where I get you up and running quickly with short videos and hands-on exercises. For details and more videos like this, click the link in the description below.